There is a powerful tool that will help you disarm toxic people, and we're going to share that tool with you right now. You ready? What we do is this. We use short, simple questions. Now, there is a reason for this. It is because the person who asks questions controls the conversation. If you have ever studied debate, if you have ever been in politics, you understand this principle very well. The person who asks questions controls the conversation. So when you are engaged with a engaging conversation, I should say, with a toxic narcissist or a toxic person, what you should do as a person with Asperger's syndrome is defend yourself and equal the playing field using simple, short questions. Now, of these short, simple questions, and we have a reason for all of them, the, the, the very last one that we're going to share with you, question number six. Yes, these are sample questions. Number six is by far the most powerful. So you're going to want to watch this video to the absolute positive very end because we're going to drill down on these four words. The last of the six questions is comprised of four words that are designed to put the narcissist, the toxic person, in his or her place. Are you ready? Okay, let's dig into it. Now, question number one is this. The question is, what? That's a question. It's a one-word question. Now, why, why is that so powerful? Well, it's for this reason. When you are approached by a narcissist or a toxic person and they say something that is totally uh, out of line, something that is designed to humiliate you or to put you down, what you are doing by saying what is you are simply asking the person to do two things. Number one, you are saying, would you please repeat what you just said? And when you ask a person to repeat something, what you are doing is subliminally, you are asking them to think about what they just said. So when somebody repeats something, they have to stop and think, what did I, what did I just say? What did I just tell this person? And by repeating it, the absurdity of whatever it is they had to say becomes very evident to this individual. Now, granted, they will, they will never admit it. And I've got to tell you, very seldom does a narcissist or a toxic person change, change their tone or change their ways. Uh, that's not what this is designed for. This is designed for self-defense, for you to put up a boundary so the narcissist understands that this guy or this woman is not a pushover. This is somebody who knows how to stand up for themselves, and they don't even think that consciously. It's just uh, implied. But it's implied so dramatically that um, they can't miss it. Unless, I don't know, maybe they're intoxicated, they may miss it, but or maybe they're just really not very bright. But for the average person, uh, make them stop and think. That's the whole idea. And when they stop and think, they have to reflect on what they are thinking. All right, number two of six is this. Why do you say that? Okay, another iteration of this uh, question would be, why do you ask that? Or why do you think that? And again, the idea behind this is to force the toxic person to reason. So typically, what I have found with toxic people is they will say things with one objective, and that is to elevate themselves and to humiliate others. So when you say, why do you do that, you are asking them, in essence, why are you humiliating me? Why are you putting me down? Why are you elevating yourself? Now, when the toxic person answers your question, and if they're really, really smart, they'll answer your question with another question. But uh, when they answer your question, that's got to cause them, on a subconscious level at least, to expose themselves to their own problem. Cognitive discord. What are they going to do? They understand, okay, I said something that is totally stupid. Now I got to dig myself out of this hole. All right, question number three is this. How did that silly notion get into your head? Silly? Yeah, how did that silly notion get into your head? Okay, why is that question so important? Because it places the toxicity in its place. It's silly. It's absurd. It's nuts. The um, 
toxic person that is bullying you or confronting you or putting you down and elevating himself or herself has to confront what he's doing. Same principle as the other questions. Number uh, four is this. That's kind of um, that's kind of selfish, don't you think? Now, this is a little bit stronger, in my opinion, because you are doing what you are doing is you are applying that this person is selfish. So this is kind of a almost an innuendo where you are suggesting to the person that, uh, you know, you're a selfish person, but you're not calling them selfish because you're just asking a question. And you're just saying that, well, the, 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 uh, whatever it is that the person just said, that is selfish. You're not actually calling the person selfish, but you're implying that. It's a tacit way of exposing the person's selfishness. And when you do that, the individual has to stop and think, this guy's calling me selfish. Maybe, maybe I am selfish. No, I'm not selfish. I'm perfect in all of my ways. And, you know, you just throw the guy off guard or the woman, whoever it happens to be. The next one is this. Why should I believe you? And again, here is a suggestion. It is a tacit, implied statement. That's why. That's another reason why we form these as questions. Is you're not calling the guy um, a liar. You know, you're just kind of implying that he's not being totally honest. Why should I believe you? And it also brings the person's character into question as well. That this is not an honest person that you can trust. Why should I believe you? Okay, those are five of the six. Now, what about the sixth one? What about these four words that nearly always put a narcissist into place? And I have, I have used this uh, probably a dozen times, and as of yet, it's never failed. It just, it just puts the narcissist or the toxic person back on their heels. It just kind of blows them away because it, it uh, well, the, here, here is the question. And you'll see why. Four words are, would you grow up? Question mark. All right, there can be different iterations to this. You can say, would you just grow up? Or would you put on your big boy pants? I don't really like that one. But, uh, you know, there, there are different ways you could phrase it. But I usually say, would you just grow up? Now, why, why is that so powerful? Well, it's powerful because... Every narcissist, every toxic narcissist is, at the root, a toddler. Now stop and think about this for a second. When you are one, two years old and you're just learning to walk, you're just learning words, there are two words that uh, most every toddler learns. Number one is the word no, and number two is the word mine. That's narcissistic. Now most people grow out of it. I mean, by the time they're five or six years old, they're understanding that they're not the center of the universe. And if they have good parenting, it goes beyond that. And they understand you're not only not, everything isn't just about you, but it's also about other people as well. So you have to contribute to those who are around you. You've got to be a part of it. You've got to be a part of the solution, not part of the problem, or however you want to phrase it. But not so to that little toddler. Everything he sees or she sees it's mine. Okay, right now I'm looking at a camera. If I were a toddler, I'd say, mine, even if it's not mine. Uh, toddler, take them, to, um, take them to a playground and everything there, mine. Take them to a store. You got, look, don't take that off the shelf. That's not yours. Mine, they grab it. That is a narcissist. They never grow out of it. It's kind of like a part of their brain. And uh, I, I've never seen research on this. But I'm guessing there is a part of their brain, neurologically, that has never matured. It's kind of like it's just stuck in one or, uh, stuck at the age of one or two years old. Now, some people intellectually, you know, tragic to say that uh, intellectually they are stuck at a very young age. And so they have special needs. And as a society, we take care of those people. But there are some other people who, though intellectually, they may be normal or above normal, 
But when it comes to other components of their mind, their thinking process, they're still way, way, way behind. So a narcissist, a toxic narcissist, and everyone who has Asperger's syndrome understands this because you are confronted by these people constantly because we are easy prey. Anybody who is an empath understands this because we are just by nature easy prey for these people. Everything is mine and there's somebody who will let me take it. Speaking of people who have Asperger's syndrome or uh, people who are empaths. So they are saying, uh, mine, 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 mine. My idea is the best. My car is the best. My family is better than your family. Um, I have better ideas in the workplace. Uh, we're all going to eat what I want to eat because I've studied nutrition and I know more than everybody else. Uh, we're going to go where I want to go because, well, I'm just, because me, you know, they, there is no real logic or reason to that. That's why we ask some of these questions, to make them think. Okay, so you say, would you just grow up? What are you doing? What are you doing to the narcissist? What you are doing is you are, and this is why this is so powerful, you are exposing the real person for what they are. You're taking away the mask. And there's one thing narcissist and toxic people hate more than anything else, and that is to be exposed for who they really are. Well, who are they really? They're toddlers. They're toddlers. They, don't, they do not want that to get out. They hide it because that is their security. They are truly, extremely, very immature people, toddlers living in adult bodies. Would you just grow up? How, how are they gonna answer that? Well, typically they may say, well, why don't you just grow up? Doesn't matter. They can't unhear what you said. That question is now embedded in their minds. Now, if you say that with other people around, oh, they hate it. They can't stand it. I mean, the, the, the narcissist, toxic people. So here is this toxic narcissist, and he is confronting a person with Asperger's syndrome, or he is confronting a person who is an empath, somebody who is easy prey, and he loves to, he loves to attack these people, humiliate them before others. That's, that's just the way they are. And you throw it right back at them. Why don't you just grow up? And everybody turns around and looks. Yeah, you know, that guy is kind of immature. Is kind of childish. And it doesn't end there. It goes on and on and on and on. And if you look at those rectangles on the screen right now, you see more that we have on these topics. So go ahead, while you're thinking of it, click on those videos. And if you don't mind, share this video on social media.